What's going on, everybody? It's uh, going on uh, quarter to 12 here in the old sports office. Uh, Mike here. How you doing? A uh, couple of things here with uh, with a, a quick blog. I promised you another one uh, for tonight, uh, from the one that I cut last night, but didn't get posted until today, but it's, I digress. Uh, last time I was in here talking about the NHL labor problems, you know, I, you know, I was admittedly steamed. Uh, you know, I, I apologize for letting my temper get the best of me. But when you saw the smoke and mirror show that the NHLPA put out today, and I'm sorry, guys, that's what it is to me. Right now, we got so much more, we got so much posturing right now. It's not even funny. Uh, this alternative plan where the players say they'll give back, you know, they're they're make concessions. Uh, to the owners, anywhere between four hundred and sixty-five million, and it could go as high as eight hundred million. Hey, that's all well and good. It's great that you're thinking outside the box. It's great that it's an alternative plan. But you know what? When it's plans and it's taking you a month to respond, and there's a month before the deadline, a hard deadline, according to the commissioner Gary Bettman. Uh, I don't look. I'm not blaming the players. Both sides are, are equally to blame here. Uh, the Players Association, a little too slow, but, I mean, granted, you got to give them time to look through all the documentation and everything. I get that, but it just, there doesn't feel like there's a sense of urgency. And the owners likely stand, you know, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that they stand to make more without playing games. It's not like the NBA uh, lockout that we just went through. But it's a crime. I mean, this is a crime for fans. And it was the same way with, you know, the NFL got lucky. They lost one game. They lost the Hall of Fame game. Which, you know, is, it's football, but it's marginal football at best. Uh, because of the fact that it's exhibition, it's the first one, it's the first game played, nobody knows anything. I mean, it could, I've seen, I've seen Hall of Fame games that are bad. I've not seen exhibition games that were just as dreadful as, uh, and I watched only bits and pieces of it. Thankfully, I saved myself the, uh, the, the, the hurt of watching Dallas and Oakland the other night. That was just unbearable. Um, but... That aside, the NFL got lucky. They lost one fake game. They lost one preseason game. The NBA lost months of their season. You know, starting it up right around Christmas, they played a compressed schedule, 66 games uh, in about four months, which was just ridiculous. The basketball was, uh, you know, it got better as the year went on, but guys were breaking down because of injury earlier than, you know, well, not earlier, but they were breaking down because of just constant play, 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 play. And it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't great basketball. Teams weren't able to implement, implement systems. It was just a rushed deal, you know. I mean, it just, it just wasn't good, you know. It wasn't what you come to expect from the NBA. NHL, I got news for you. You're heading down the same path as the NBA. And, and that's the truth. If, you, if they don't get a deal done, they're going to miss time. They're going to miss camps. Season's going to be delayed. And for what? For opportunities to talk that were wasted, uh, for for a, and they're going to throw away they're going to throw away season and once again they're going to throw away parts of a season I think and hey they they canceled an entire year before so why wouldn't the owners do that again if they wanted to I mean that's the thing it's not one sided here I'm not picking on the players association I'm not picking on the owners I'm picking on them both okay both sides have to recognize and I said this in a previous blog both sides have to realize they're in this together without pro, without players you got no product without owners. Players don't have jobs. It's that simple. Find a happy medium, get a deal done. It's too much, too much posturing. Too much, you know, machismo. Sit down, talk it out, get a deal, make everybody happy. Owners, you can still make your money. Players can still make their money. Fans can still see the games. All right, enough of that. Uh, the uh, Panthers. Panthers break camp Wednesday. How about that? Hmm. Won't that be fun? Uh, sorry, I always wanted to do that. <laughs> Panthers break camp Wednesday. They get uh, broken out of Wofford College. After the 10.30 workout, 10.30 to 1, if you're going down and you're seeing this tonight, uh, go to sleep. Uh, but if you're waking up in the morning, you got time to get in the car and go, uh, but it's got to be early. 10.30 workout, they wrap up around 1 o'clock, and, uh, it, you know, my advice, stay off I-85. It's usually the the Panther 500 uh, as these guys race their way back to, back to Charlotte uh, after being down in Spartanburg and being away from family and, and the like uh, for two and a half weeks. And they get, you know, they get breaks thanks to the new CBA. Uh, you know, they had the 24-hour period off, and you get time off after games and stuff like that. So, uh, mentioned uh, how poorly they played uh, against uh, Houston. To be expected, once again, I'm trying to talk people off the ledge, and more people say, oh, it's going to be a bad year. You don't know that. You just don't know it. We don't know anything. 
uh, right now. All we do know is that they play the Miami Dolphins on Friday night, and uh, they'll do so uh, probably playing the starters for the first half. So it won't be just three series and, and be done with it. And so I, I, I would expect the Panther offense to be in a better rhythm. I would expect the Panther defense. Uh, Thomas Davis is back working out. John Beeson's still slow. No need to rush him because you still got a couple weeks of the preseason. And honestly, I'd be surprised when you look at the schedule, I'd be surprised if Beeson plays more. I mean, if he's able to come back and play, I'd be surprised if he plays both. Because uh, I, I don't see him playing Friday. But I, I, I would think, I'd be surprised if you see him play in the final two preseason games. I think you'll get him in one if he's able to go. I think he'll get one. Because remember, they play Sunday night in week three against the Jets. And they got to turn around and play Thursday night against Pittsburgh. Both of those are road games, so it's obviously a very short turnaround. Uh, the starters, I don't. If I'm Ron Rivera, I may not even dress the starters. I mean, you, maybe you dress them, you have them go through the pregame, but I don't think they take the field for maybe a series. And I mean both offense and defense. I mean, really, you're going to get work out of them in week three against the Jets. Four days later, you're going to put them up, put them back on the field against the Steelers. In, I mean, once again, in a meaningless game, I mean, if D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart each get one carry apiece and Cam throws one pass, that's enough. You know, they've done enough. You, and they'll have time to recover and get ready for the season opener against Tampa. But I'd be, I'd be shocked to see them play more than, than even a series. Uh, it, it, I, honestly, it would not surprise me at all if they don't play, if they really don't play at all. Um, but I think uh, Friday against the Dolphins, you look for uh, you look for better execution from the Panther offense. You look for the defense to tackle better. Uh, I think tackling was very very sloppy in the first game, uh, and I think you know, according to, according to Ron Rivera, you better see better effort. Uh, that's according to the coach. You know, I, I'm not a judge of effort, and I'm on the field, you know, shooting the game. So I'm looking. I'm basically I'm not watching the game. I'm more focusing and framing the game. Um, so I, I'm not judging it like if I, I would be if I were sitting up in the press box. So i got to take Coach's word for it. Uh, it looked to me like the guys were trying hard, but, I mean, once again, tackling was very poor against Houston. You can see that through a viewfinder with the naked eye. Got to wrap up, got to bring a man to the ground. And it wasn't even like the Panther defense was trying to deliver hits. I mean, they were trying to wrap and strip, and that's all well and good to try to get the football. But at some point, the ball carrier's got to hit the ground. So that's that I think you'll see as a point of emphasis, at least this week. Uh, against uh, against the Dolphins. So, that being said, uh, Chad Johnson released by the Dolphins uh, one day after the, uh, the the alleged domestic is incident with uh, his now soon to be ex wife uh, Ev- Ev- Evelyn. I think is her name. I mean, I don't. This shows you how much reality TV I watch. No idea of her name. Uh, but I will say this: when you meet someone on Twitter. I don't see forever there. I, call me crazy. I'm not. I'm not seeing partnership. Is that, is that just me? Or I, I don't know. You kids today in your Twitter, uh, which you can follow me at Mike Solarte, of course. You know, I, you already do. I know. Um, yeah, I, you know, and I, you know, I, I don't feel badly for Chad Johnson. You don't get yourself in that situation. You just don't do it. So it's hard for me to feel bad for him. Uh, it's hard for me to feel bad for that relationship falling apart because, once again, it started on Twitter. It's, it's just me. I don't know. But, you know, you might you might disagree. Um, had something else for you, too. Had something else for Oh, Charlotte 49ers. Yeah. Got the Niner uh, baseball shirt going here. But the 49er basketball team. Uh, exhibition game. They got a win against the Bahamas Giants. 88-63. Perry A. Henry had 15 points. Uh, they had 10, 15, 10 for 15 shooting from uh, a sophomore, Terrence, and, and I don't have the notes in front of me right now, but uh, he, he played well. Uh, had 21 in the game, so uh, that's that's obviously a good sign uh, that Alan Major's getting some productivity uh, from some young guys because they're going to, you know, they're trying to find their way without Chris Braswell right now, and uh, and that's, a, that's still, it's a nice win. It's an exhibition game, doesn't mean much, but for what these guys are trying to do, go out with a bang, you know, get ready for the Conference USA switch. And uh, and have one good strong season going into that jump. Uh, if you can find if, Mal, if Alan Major can find some some combinations that work uh, with his rotation, that's going to be that's going to be a big positive uh, for the Niners going forward. So anyway, they get the exhibition win. That's all well and good. Uh, quick shout out and a salute to the Duke Blue Devil football team. Uh, they may not win a whole bunch of games, but they are doing something which is really really classy. 
uh, putting the number eight on the backs of the helmets uh, this year. And they actually have a black on black, which that's another blog altogether. Um, you know, the, the 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 matte finish with the gloss D, uh, black and black. And I, I that's that's like I said, it's another blog altogether talking about uniforms, which you'll love that rant. Uh, <laughs> but what they're doing is they're putting the number eight on the backs of the helmets. Every helmet doesn't matter if you wear number 16, 68, 74. You're going to have an eight on the back of your helmet at Duke, and that's a good thing because they're keeping in mind their fallen teammate Blair Holiday. Uh, he was injured over the Fourth of July holiday with in a jet ski accident. Very touch and go. Apparently, he's doing better. He's talking to the team. Was uh, Coach Cutcliffe had him on the uh, on a speakerphone for the entire bunch, and uh, apparently that 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 hit home. It would not surprise me to see Duke have a, have a decent year. It really wouldn't. Uh, you know, when you got that motivating force behind the team, sometimes you, you just don't know what's going to happen. So, uh, anyway, when it comes to Duke, uh, class move by the players, by the coaches, to put that number eight on that uh, on the back of the helmet. That's a very very cool uh, thing to do. Nice rallying cry. All right, going to get out of here because it's almost midnight. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this went for eleven minutes. See how easily this posts. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again maybe Thursday. Uh, but then on Friday, don't forget the Hendrick Friday Night Final. Uh, new sponsor this year. Welcome aboard, Hendrick. And uh, high school football from across the state. It's going to be awesome. Kind of from the coast, Raleigh, Greensboro, Charlotte, you name it. It's the one place to be to see all your high school football needs. All right, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys again here later this week, before the weekend for sure.